So I wanted to bring on one of the actual presenters. Rather smooth transition. I'll pat myself on the back. We have Daniel here from Liechtenstein. We're going to get right into the fascinating countries pretty far away from Canada. So tell us, Daniel. First of all, how's it going? How, what is it like to be at the conference so far? It's wonderful. It's our first time here in Canada, also in the conference cool. and on this fair. And it's really nice to see and talk to people and tell them where Liechtenstein is located. Because you mentioned it's very far away, but actually it's in the heart of Europe. So if you've never heard about it, it's the sixth smallest country in the world. So, um, yeah, pretty cool. That is check, check. And is it the richest country in the world as well? Does it work? Okay. <laughs> uh, the richest one. No, um, no. I don't think so. Not quite. I think it's up there. <laughs> uh, it, it's wonderful. A mix between a living and also nature. Yeah, yeah, cool. Okay. It might be rich in different ways. Culturally rich. Um, can you tell us about any holidays, any things uh, traditionally that you like about that? So we, we I think we have uh, the most um, public holidays because we take all the public holidays from Austria and Switzerland and have our own. But also, if you talk about riches, I think it's also about um, the education. So we have a wonderful university there, which is very personal, very personal located. And the students, they all have uh, their names. It's not just about the student number, so it's about the names. So it's a personal university. Okay. Thank you for uh, working with me to pass this mic back and forth. <laughs> So we're talking about Liechtenstein, rather, right? And that was a nice, I wanted to say, nice segue. We were talking about it. You went right into education. So let's talk about your university. Uh, who are you representing today? And uh, what, what do you expect to tell students when they come up to your table? So, yeah, we have a wonderful bachelor and master programs. We're here today for students who are interested in studying their masters in, at the University of Liechtenstein. Uh, because it's an international university, we have a. As, as, I mean, we're only forty thousand people living there, so that means we need to lo have a lot of students from abroad, and we have more than forty countries there. I mean, students from forty countries studying in Liechtenstein, and this makes it very uh, personal, but also individual. So I think students from Canada, we had some there also the last semester, and uh, they bring really nice flavor into it, and it's a very nice culture they learn from each other. And the programs are in English, right? Yes, he's nodding. Yes, they are. <laughs> yes, they are in English. I'm not sure why I'm uh, why I'm answering. What other questions do you have though uh, for Daniel? <laughs> well, I'm not a student, but if I was a if I was a student, I'd be asking, yeah, why should I choose Liechtenstein? What's so special about it, or what's it famous for? Sure. Okay. Great question. So I think uh, one good and big deal is uh, it's compared to here very in a way. I don't want to call it cheap. But it's, if you compare it, it's only 2000 per semester. So mm. I think it's uh, you don't pay too much for very good education. That's very cheap. It's in the heart of Europe. Mm. So you have all the other countries around it. Um, you can stay there. Uh, you can also find a job in a way there. And as I mentioned before, it's an uh, international environment. Mm -hmm. So it's very personal. And maybe some people don't want to go abroad because they don't know anyone. But after, I think, five minutes, you know already a person in Liechtenstein. And yeah, you can talk to them. They're very friendly. And I believe it's beautiful as well. You have mountains, right? Uh, we have a lot. So we have a lot of lakes. We have mountains. You can ski. So from Liechtenstein in 20 minutes, you're up and ski. In 50 minutes, you're again on the lake and beachside. There are a lot of public places where you can do a lot of sport for free. So, yeah. Amazing. That's right, one Daniel. country I haven't been to. I want to go. <laughs> oh, so I certainly haven't been there either, but I am interested. Now, looking at Canada, right? We're, we're going to get into this uh, perspective. You're coming from Liechtenstein. You're looking at Canada. What can we do better? We don't have the mountains. We don't. I mean, we do have the mountains. Not in Ontario is in what Vancouver. I mean. Or Vancouver certainly has the mountains. Is this mic on, A? Eh? Check, check, check. Yeah, I think it is. And so when you're coming to Canada, what do you think of this country, right? What do you think of being in Toronto here today? Uh, as I'm looking at pictures of Liechtenstein, it doesn't look a lot like downtown Toronto. <laughs> yeah, because downtown Toronto is uh, very big. So um, I would say, not sure what you can do better because I haven't been much to Canada and I haven't seen so much. Um, but I would like to see more and learn more from you how Canada works. And that's why we're also here because this is an intercultural exchange. Absolutely. It certainly is. It certainly is. So um, I want to ask you, Daniel, have you ever done a study abroad program? Did it impact you in a positive way? Very good question, because I think this is part of studying. Um, I was in Sri Lanka for half a year. I was studying there in Sri Lanka, and this was an amazing experience. So that's why I also tell my students, so I'm responsible for one of our master programs. I always tell them, if you have the chance to go abroad, do it. It's not about the courses you take there. It's about the people you meet. It's about experience. That's why I would say, wherever you go, you don't need to go to Liechtenstein. There are also other beautiful countries, but it would be one of the options. 
That's fantastic. And um, I want to go back to Katie. Have you ever heard of students who had a particularly good experience through your program here? At today, again, I'll study and go abroad at the downtown Toronto Convention Centre. Go ahead, Katie. I thought you were going to ask about students going to Liechtenstein. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, funny enough, I used to work for a language school and we used to get quite a few students from Liechtenstein. Really? Which is very interesting. But um, yeah, sorry, what was the question? I well, I just want to know, as, as we're here at the conference today, are there any particular pathways that students find really popular? Um, and, and what are the tables that are visited most? Um, well, I think, uh, well, I recommend people to open their minds to lots of different choices. Like, I think traditionally, uh, Canadians have always gone to the US, okay. UK, Australia. You've got to think further than that. I mean, these are all Commonwealth countries, right? Yeah. Uh, Australia and, and the United Kingdom. Liechtenstein, that's got to be way Absolutely. up there on the list. You can really uh, open your horizons and, and see some different parts of the country. Yeah, and the, and the beauty with Europe is that it's a hop, skip and jump away from other countries. Sure. Like, we don't have that in Canada. We can't jump on a plane for an hour and be in a different country. We can't right. even get on a train. And probably from Liechtenstein, you probably go half an hour and you're, you're in another country. Mm -hmm. But we just can't do that. And there's so many rich cultures in Europe. Absolutely. And uh, it's so easy once you're there to do a weekend in another country, yeah. even like a day trip to another country. Yeah, yeah. And that's something really, really special for us. And I think a lot of students are very attracted to that. Um, but I would say also there's so much to be learned from studying abroad, like not only Obviously, you you go and experience a different country, but you become more independent. You have to be more independent because you have to stand on your own two <laughs> yeah. feet. I, I, I can speak for that. I was in Spain this summer uh, in a country, not my native language, trying to get around. And I, th I think it did teach me some lessons I wasn't necessarily expecting to learn Um you know, how to deal with roommates, how to, um, oh my goodness, how to renew your visa, something I did not have to deal with, but I'm sure there are pre presenters here tonight um, who can help you with things like that. Um, but yeah, it's like a great lesson in, in being an adult, which mm -hmm. isn't always fun, but this is what I'm having to deal with right now. Yeah, I think you have to grow as, you, you grow as a person. I mean, you're sure. never the same. Sure, if you sure. go, and like for your six months in Sri Lanka, amazing. I'm sure you came back a different person. Yeah. And just your perspective of the world changes. Yeah. So uh, it just opens your mind. And, it is a big world out yeah. there. So, Daniel, when you went to Sri Lanka, what sticks out to you in your memory? <laughs> the traffic noise. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, <laughs> but you really, you really learn to accept different ways how you do things. And I think this was the most impressive uh, thing I learned over there. Yeah, to, to get accepted, what, how they do their life. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, as Katie was mentioning earlier, in, in Europe, you're traveling uh, rather short distances, but seeing the language change and things like this. I interviewed a student last year from the very southern tip of India, a Tamil-speaking uh, city. Uh, this student was from Nagarkoil, which means snake temple. I'm sure, I'm sure Daniel knew that about the <laughs> snake temple. But you're in Sri Lanka. I, I feel as though um, there might be a real cultural mix. So what did you notice, the foods, the, the music, the tradition of that place? So it was all about uh, tradition, as you mentioned. They, of course, have their own tradition and also their own food. Um, they have some inspiration from India because it's also a Tamil in the north part. Um, but they do a lot of uh, dancing and activities like this and they celebrate their own holidays. And this was nice to see how they dance. Fascinating. And I appreciate you coming and talking on our radio show today. You really jumped into it. You're a natural. Um, Let's see here. Expanding. Let's go back to talking about Liechtenstein. So what are the steps for a student to get into this program? Who do they have to speak to? What could they learn? So um, I would say so we have a few opportunities to do. So we have online info sessions. They can just participate online. They can just book an appointment on our website. They can write me an email. Um, usually what we do, we talk to each person who applies for our program and you apply online. Then we have the interview. We talk about the program and also about the motivation because we only have 20 to 30 students in each program, so they need to uh, get along with each other. That's why we talk to them. As I mentioned before, it's intercultural, but also personal. And uh, you mentioned before that uh, um, stopping to country to country. So Liechtenstein, actually, you can pass three countries walking in one day. 
Love it. <laughs> That's got to be a world record. This summer in Spain, I was in the Basque country. And uh, it's interesting because, you know, traveling between European nations, you don't necessarily need to to stop at the border as you do in Canada and, you know, show them half your, your luggage. Um, but what you, do, what you can do is just walk, simply walk straight across. And the border is particularly fuzzy in the, in the Basque country between France and Spain. So what are some of the countries surrounding Liechtenstein? Uh, which ones have you enjoyed visiting? So both of them, there's um, Austria and Switzerland. And I love to ski in both areas. Um, Switzerland is really beautiful during the summer because it's it's warm, but you still have the cold lakes to go and also the nice mountains where you can hike up. Um, but everything is close. I mean, in uh, two and a half hours, you're in Italy. In uh, one hour, you're in Germany. So as I mentioned, in the heart of Europe. Amazing. Actually, just to, just to let you know, next next year, I'm actually... Um, I'm actually going to go running for six days uh, through France, Italy, and Switzerland in six days. That's terrific. So every day we change country. <laughs> incredible, incredible. So you're, you're, you said you're running. Yeah, this is actually my honeymoon. Tell us about that. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. And your husband w agreed to this. Yeah, you know what we should do? Uh, go for a run. So how far are you going to run yeah, every day? 165 kilometers in total in six, seven days. Okay. Yeah, but three countries, round Mont Blanc. That so, is fantastic. And that's the beauty of Europe, like no borders. We just run, and I don't even know if we know when we're in a different country, except people speak different languages. That it's, it's super cool. <laughs> it, it is super fascinating. Have you done another trip similar to this one before? I um, must have. Yeah, not quite. Yeah, I mean, I've traveled in Europe, but I'm from England originally. I traveled in Europe. I did my interrail when I was younger. So in a month, I traveled like, through lots of countries on the train. So I have an experience doing it, but I've never actually run around the country. So that's super cool. Yeah. And that's the beauty of, um, yeah, beauty of Europe. It certainly is. It's a beautiful day here in Toronto. You should get outside and go for a run. Yesterday, <laughs> I had a, a beautiful one. Um, but going back to Daniel, you mentioned skiing. We're in a country that loves skiing. Ontario, not the most mountainous. But as you get into Quebec and British Columbia and Alberta, we do love it. So tell us, Daniel, about your skiing history, yeah? Oh, that's, uh, I, I can tell you about my snowboard history. <laughs> Daniel, I'm a lifetime snowboarder. You better tell me. Because my brother is a snowboard teacher. And when I wanted to start something doing in the mountain, not just hiking, he mentioned, just grab the snowboard. It looks cooler than skiing. I, I know that's not fair to say, but it's what he told me. And then I started snowboarding. It's entirely true. I'm so happy I learned that you're a snowboarder. Um, I know of, uh, I think, a Norwegian brothers called the Helgeson brothers, Haldor and Icky Helgeson. Um, I'm trying to think of other European snowboarders, but are there any from Liechtenstein? Um, so from Liechtenstein snowboarders, that's a good question. The, I don't think so. I'm not sure. <laughs> but there's skiing. So we have, we have a wonderful, uh, famous person for skiing. Uh, she's called Tina Weirata, and she also, I think, uh, won a lot of uh, medals. That's terrific. For anybody who's really into snowboarding, good for you. Let's let's give an, a, a round of applause here at this convention to snowboarders everywhere. Arthur Longo, another French snowboarder who is terrific, um, and uh, I, I do love it. I'm going off on a tangent, man. I'm, I didn't think I was going to talk about snowboarding here today, but it's a beautiful, beautiful sport. Here we are, uh, downtown Toronto. This is the Study and Go Abroad convention. We're here today talking with Daniel, one of our first guests of, uh, of today, right? The next few hours until four, I believe. Um, but we're also going to play some music. Um, and so let's get into a music break right here. This is CIUT 89.5 FM. Thank you, Daniel. We'll be back after the break. 